Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. My video today is going to be kind of a continuation of what I've been doing, which is collections. I did my shoe collection, my boot collection, and someone has asked me to do my handbag collection, so I thought I would do that today. Um, it is not too big, but it's not too small either, so I'm going to talk a little bit fast to get through all of the bags. I'm going to begin today with um, one of the high street bags. So this is a Kate Spade bag. As you can see, it's very tiny. It does have this cute little clasp on the front here, which turns like so, and you open it up, and it's very small inside. However, it does have a strap. So uh, the reason I got this is because I wanted something very small to take the concerts or sporting events, things like that. This fits the bill because it works as a crossbody. So it has this long strap here, uh, and you obviously just pop it over your shoulders and you could use it as a crossbody. If you'd like, you can also use it as a clutch by tucking the straps inside, which uh, to be honest with you, I haven't done mostly because the straps take up an awful lot of room and the bag itself is really very tiny. So there's not a whole lot that can actually fit in here. There's just one tiny little pocket on the inside and that's about it. So I could fit my phone in here, maybe um, a card holder or my identification and perhaps my uh, lipstick and keys and that's about it. It's not leather but it is a cute uh, color and a uh, nice little design and it comes in handy for a lot of different uses so I really do like this. This is one of my, this is my only Kate Spade bag. Okay, continuing on with what you might consider high street Brands. This is my Ted Baker tote. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen this bag behind me on my shelf. I love to display it because I think it is absolutely beautiful. It has this gorgeous flower here, and then the lattice design goes all the way around. It has nice feet on the bottom. It's got some beautiful hardware. This is, of course, Ted Baker, and Ted Baker always does a lot of gorgeous hardware. So it says Ted, Ted Baker on the front here. As you can see, it is a large tote bag, but it does not have a strap. It only has the two handles to carry, and you would think it would be very roomy, but in fact, it's not really very roomy at all because there are so many different compartments. So there's a compartment right here that closes with a magnetic snap, and inside that compartment, there's some pockets. It does have a really pretty lining, though. It's a black and white floral lining, which I also like. And then on this side, we have another magnetic snap and another pocket right there. And then in the interior, there is yet another compartment with a zipper. So those compartments really take up a lot of space in the bag and make it a little less functional, at least for me. I kind of like to just throw things in my bag and when I have to shuffle things around and dig things out in order to get other things out, I get a little frustrated. So uh, for me, this bag didn't really very, uh, didn't work very well for functionality's sake. However, it is very beautiful. And a lot of times I will just take it out in the early spring, like in March when you're sick to death of the cold weather and this would be the bag that I would reach for just to get a little taste of spring but um, it is not leather it has worn a little bit on the bottom here I don't know if you can see on the camera there was some splitting at the edges which I had to fix with super glue not really thrilled that I had to fix my bag with super glue but uh, overall I do have to say the look of it is really nice the functionality not so much Okay, continuing on with the last of my high street bags, this would be my Pietro NYC or New York City tote bag. I think this is called the Morgan tote. So it is made out of this beautiful smooth leather. The leather is really gorgeous and it has a really nice sheen to it, which means that the leather itself prevents scratching. I can run my nails up and down this without a problem. And it is a tote bag. It's got the two straps on the top. It closes with this little strap magnet design right here and you can see the Pietro is written on the little strap there and then on the inside there is a pochette so the pochette is a little bit on the smaller size it is detachable uh, by uh, a snap uh, it's very small and very narrow but it is out of the same leather as the bag is and it comes in handy for things like cards coupons, gift cards, loyalty cards, things like that. Then there is also a shoulder strap, and the shoulder strap is great because it is really um, 
long. It is adjustable, I'd say about four inches, and it tucks nicely into the bag. So if uh, mostly I'm wearing this with a uh, handheld uh, strap like this. However, if I need to get my hands free, I will often just pull out the strap and pull it over my shoulder and it works out really well. The interior of the bag is sort of raw leather. I have it stuffed with some air paper so you can't really see, but um, over here you can see the, the raw edge of the leather right there. And the straps themselves are sewn on in a unique way. Instead of being attached on the outside of the bag, they're actually sewn into the bag, which gives it a really neat look. And then one of my favorite features of this bag are these two big pockets in the front here. So I can slide my cell phone in one, my car keys, or my even my small wallet in here, and they're very accessible and easy to use, so I really do like the functionality of this tote bag. Uh, I think the color is beautiful. Oh, and these snaps, too. You can change the shape of it if you wanted to. I kind of like the trapeze shape. But if you want to make it more square, you can do that. And typically, I keep those sides snapped like that to give it that trapeze shape and to keep my uh, shoulder strap in place. Sorry. And uh, I carry it like this. So a really nice brand, probably an up-and-coming brand, I would say. A little harder to find. You can go on their website, but I don't see it in too many stores. So that's my Pietro New York City. Okay, moving on to my designer brand. So this is a tiny little Burberry. This is the only Burberry I have left. I have had a couple Burberry bags in the past and I have sold them all. Um, not to say anything negative about Burberry because I really do like Burberry, uh, but for some reason the bags just weren't working for me any, anymore. I got a little tired of them and they do have a nice resale value so I decided to sell them. But this is a tiny little bag, sort of reminiscent of that Kate Spade. I bought it specifically for using a tiny bag, to go, going to concerts, going to uh, sporting events, whatever. There's nothing on the interior except for just the little identification of the Burberry right there. So it's a big empty interior. It's kind of uh, bendy, so you can open it up quite a bit, but obviously the small size of it is a little bit um, too small for a lot of things. I could fit my phone in here and maybe a couple of other items similar to the Kate Spade. Now the strap itself does disconnect, so I suppose you could use it as a pochette in a larger bag. It doesn't connect to itself over here to make a wristlet though, which is a little bit disappointing, but overall I have to say that I like the color of it with this Nova check and then uh, of course the red leather trim is really nice. I should probably think about using it as either a pochette or a makeup bag. I'll have to give that some thought. Okay, continuing on. Next up I have my Gucci. This is my only Gucci bag. It is the uh, Soho Disco bag, as you can see if you're familiar with Gucci. Love this bag. It's camera bag shape. And even though it is tiny, it has a ton of room inside because it opens up really nice and wide. There's one pocket in the front, one larger pocket in the back. That's where I keep all of my authenticity cards. And in this bag, because it comes down on the side with the zipper, you can open it up quite a bit. I can fit my full-size wallet and my phone and quite a few little things in here. Now, I am not much of a crossbody bag user. I typically do not wear them. However, I bought this one specifically because I was on vacation and I wanted a crossbody so that I could have my hands free and it worked out absolutely perfectly. It is in this beautiful beige color. It's nice and soft and of course the strap is nice and long and adjustable. Very, very comfortable bag. So as far as crossbodies go for someone who doesn't really wear them, this is the best option for me because it is uh, so comfortable and so practical and so easy to get it in and out of. It does have some beautiful hardware here you can see around the little tassel and I love the tassel because all you have to do is just grab it and open and close. So it's really cute, really chic and I think it's becoming a classic because I see them all over the place and people never get tired of these. I love my Gucci bag. Okay, continuing on, uh, let's go to my Menster Gabrielle. This is another bag that I have done a complete review on. It is the bucket bag. It was the it bag several years ago. I put my name on a waiting list to get it and everything. And when it arrived, I fell in love with it. Well, I was in love with it before I even got it, but I really, really love this bag. Now, it is the raw leather, the Vachetta leather. If you are someone who doesn't like scratches and patinas, this would not be for you. But it has softened up a little bit over the years. It has a nice long strap with a lot of adjustability. I think there's seven different uh, slots here that you can adjust it for. 
Uh, so you could actually wear a crossbody if you wanted to. I don't because I hate having a big bag hitting on my thigh as I'm walking. But uh, I usually wear it over my shoulder. It opens up nicely with this strap here. You can tie it in a bow and then you open it up. And the inside is just a big open space with a beautiful matte pink lining, which is another reason why I love this bag. I think the color of it is gorgeous. And then it has a pochette as well. Very, very narrow pochette. Uh, someone mentioned that it looks almost useless because it's so narrow. And it is very narrow. However, uh, for my pochettes, usually what I use them for is like, um, you know, those loyalty cards or you get gift cards or you have coupons or something. Uh, I usually tuck them in here and that way they keep them all nice and neat. Um, the interior of the little pochette is also lined with the matte pink leather, which I love. Now this pochette attaches in a little bit of a different way. It actually has a snap here and you just snap it on. It's easy to snap, but it's also easy to unsnap and I find a lot of times it will disconnect itself automatically. But overall, the exterior of the bag is going to have a lot of wear and tear, but you can fit anything in it at any time. The interior of the bag actually wears very well because of that matte patent leather. I've wiped it out with a clean cloth. I've even vacuumed it with the vacuum hose when it got a little dusty inside. But a uh, really nice bag. I do love it. It was getting, uh, it was starting to look a little bit beat up, and so I didn't really take it out much this year. I kind of replaced it with a, a Louis Vuitton for the summertime, but I have to say I love my men's together. Next up is my Chloe bag. This is my one and only Chloe bag. If you're familiar with Chloe, you probably know that they're really well known for their hardware. So there's some beautiful gold hardware here on the edge, on that side and on that side. And there is also this really pretty little caps that they put on the edge of the, these aren't really tassels, they're sort of closure straps. Uh, and it gives it a really nice look. There's this pull tab that you can pull up and down if you want to open and close it. The bag has one shoulder strap that is not adjustable, but it is quite beautiful. The bag itself is this beautiful co cobalt blue, and it has this beautiful beige trim on the strap on one side, and then on the other side it is brown, which really, to my eye, uh, steps it up a notch and makes it look super designer, and of course super Chloe, because Chloe is always a little bit more cutting edge than the rest of the bags out there. This one has some snaps too if you want to open up a little bit. So four snaps towards the edges, the outside edges of the bag. But in reality, it doesn't open up that much. Now I do have it stuffed with some air paper, but even so, even with taking the straps out, because of these bars on the side, it doesn't open up very much. It does have a pochette. Uh, this one will come off if you wanted to actually untie it. It's sort of looped around itself, so it is pretty secure. Again, a very narrow little pochette, similar to the Mansur Gabrielle. Oh, I have my authenticity cards in there, so there you go. That's usually what I keep inside these things. And it is uh, nicely attached. Like I said, it will come off if you work at it, but it's not going to detach by itself. So the interior of this bag is a nice canvas, I'm having a hard time showing it to you there. And uh, as far as capacity goes, nowhere near as large as the Mansur Gabrielle. Uh, this one looks a little bit bigger than it actually is, and that's because of the way the closure is and the top is. It really cannot fit as much. Now when I was using this bag regularly, I was using a full-size wallet and I had my big makeup bag and I uh, really struggled with getting things in and out of here. But I suppose if I downsized things a little bit, used a smaller wallet and maybe took away half of my belongings in my makeup bag, I might be able to get away with using this again. It is very, very pretty. Um, I get a lot of compliments on this bag when I wear it. I'll just do a little model here because I love it so much. It's just really sharp and pretty. Uh, but I don't get as much use out of it as I would like because the capacity is not as big as some of my other bucket bags. Okay, let's see. Next I have my Chanel. This is my Chanel Lambskin Jumbo Flat Bag. It is vintage. As you can see, the hardware is 24 karat gold plated, so all you need to do is turn the clasp there. You're probably familiar with this. Open it up. Single flap. Interior is kind of the burgundy colored leather. It has one pocket here, and then it has a zipper pocket behind the one pocket. 
If you go to the back of the bag, you can see that it has the traditional pocket back here as well, which is also lined in burgundy. In this pocket, I often keep my cell phone. I try not to put too much in there because I don't want to uh, change the shape of the bag or get any imprint or anything. But the lambskin leather is beautiful and it has proven to be quite durable. I haven't really had any problems with it. The strap itself is the traditional chain strap, which if you're familiar with Chanel, you probably know that you just pull it to make it longer. And so it does get quite long. If you wanted to wear it as a very long shoulder bag, you could do this, or you could even wear a crossbody. I did try to wear a crossbody one day and it dug into my shoulder something awful. Plus, every time I walked, it hit against my thigh, and I didn't like that. So for me, the best way to wear this bag is to double up the chain and to use it over my shoulder. Oops, having a little difficulty there. Okay, uh, so you just put it over your shoulder like so, and there it is. It's at the perfect height. It is a nice roomy bag. Um, can't say enough good things about this. This was a um, anniversary present from my husband. He really did well. And I absolutely love this bag. I am a little bit more careful with this one than some of my others. I tend not to wear it in for any occasions where I think it might uh, be in danger of getting wet or dirty or dropped or anything like that. Uh, it is pretty spacious inside. I can fit a lot of things in here and um, I can definitely recommend Chanel like anybody else out there. Oh, you could put the straps inside if you wanted to and use it as a um, clutch, although it is pretty big for that. But Overall, I have to say, I love my Chanel, my one and only. Um, I may never get another Chanel again. The only one I would have my eye on is the boy bag, and I'm not sure I want to spend that kind of money for such a small bag, but love my Chanel, and it's never going anywhere. I'm always going to keep it in my collection. Okay, the last of my brands before my Louis Vuittons, this is my Todd's Boletto in the... Mm, Piccolo size, that's the smallest size. I recently did a video on this because it is my favorite bag and I absolutely love this bag. And just the feel of it, oh my gosh, it's so soft and gorgeous. Love, love, love this bag. I love the look of it, I love the functionality of it, I love how I can hold it in my hand or put it on my arm or I can use the strap if I need to have my hands free. I love the way the chaps look, I love the trim, the glazing on it. It's a nice big open space inside. It has some beautiful hardware. There's uh, one pocket and there are also feet on the bottom. So everywhere you look at this bag, I think it is just gorgeous and there's just something about this bag. I absolutely, absolutely love it. So if you wanna know more about it, you can look at my favorite bag video and I will go into it in depth. But um, I talked about it so much in that, I feel like enough said. Just love it. Okay, and now let me get to my Louis Vuitton. So um, out of all of my handbags, I have more Louis Vuittons than any other brand. And we'll start with the oldest one. Now this is not the oldest one um, to my collection, meaning I haven't had this one the longest, but it is the oldest one by date code. This is called the Sac de Paul. It's about 20 years old or so. And it is basically a bucket bag. It's in the Epi leather, which I love. It opens with this one snap right here. So this kind of a belt. And then you open it up inside and it is nothing but a big black hole. So if you can see in there, it is one of the most difficult bags to see inside because it's tall and it's black. So this is the reason I bought a red wallet. And then of course I got color transfer all over my red wallet. Uh, lesson learned there. It does have inside, there is a little strap here which you can connect. A pochette if you wanted to, however, I don't have one. I don't know if it didn't come with one or the original owner did not include it. I'm not really sure. Uh, either way, I have so many other pochettes from so many other bags that it seems a, a waste to go and, and buy one. The strap itself is a shoulder strap and it only has a little bit of adjustability. There's maybe about three or four inches of adjustability there, so you cannot wear this one crossbody. I wouldn't anyway, but if you were wondering about that, it definitely does not extend that far. But it is very roomy, it is very uh, unique looking, and the uh, durability of it is phenomenal. Remember, this is a 20 year old bag and I have been using this uh, pretty regularly and have not really been babying it. 
but that is the beauty of epi leather. It seems almost indestructible, and I love my epi leather, and I really, really like this bag. Okay, next, now this is the bag that I've had in my collection the longest. This is the one that started it all. It is my Epi Speedy in the 25 size with the gold hardware. I don't think they make this one anymore, but they have so many versions of Speedy. I'm sure you're used to it. Opens up at the top with a zipper, has one pocket, but the pocket does not close. It's just a slide-in pocket, and it's rather small, and there is a D-ring on this side right here. So if you wanted to connect something, you could do so. This one too is black on the inside, so another black hole kind of handbag. But the beauty of this one is that it goes with everything. There is never an occasion that I haven't said, oh, my Speedy won't go with it because it is so classic looking and it's so timeless with the Epi leather. It's so indestructible. Uh, I've had this one since 2002, I believe and it's just been phenomenal. You can see the condition that it's in. I recently purchased a, a handbag organizer for it and I'm excited to get that. I hope it's going to be uh, functional for me and that I'll be able to change purses a little bit more easily. And I was also thinking of getting a twilly just to, or a bando just to dress it up a little bit, but we'll see about that. But I do love my Speedy. Okay, next up, another handheld bag is my Tivoli, uh, another beautiful, beautiful bag. This is my only monogram canvas bag out of all of my Louis Vuittons. I tend to go more towards the leather, I guess. Anyway, um, the shape of this is gorgeous. It has the curve on the top. It has these beautiful pleats on the front and also on the back, and the Vachetta leather has aged perfectly. I think the color of the patina is absolutely gorgeous. Now, it is a little bit longer in size than the Speedy, and you would think it would be roughly the same capacity-wise, but definitely not. Because of this curve at the top here, it does open up nicely, though it has a nice big opening, but there's actually not as much capacity in here because the sides go down, so it's not as high on the sides, and you have to be careful how you place things in there. But I have to say that this is the prettiest, prettiest Louis Vuitton bag I have, I think. You know, just for sheer beauty, this is probably the one. And I admire it every time I look at it. I don't necessarily use it that much, but I do like looking at it on my shelf. Okay, so next up is my Cinti Dean bag in the Empreinte Leather. This, as you can see, is a tote bag style. It has sort of longer straps here. Uh, it does not have a shoulder strap per se. However, you would wear this on your shoulder. Um, occasionally I would carry it in my hand, but because it's long, it'd probably be brushing the ground. Um, it has a lot of nice details. The turn lock, turn lock clasp is really very nice. And then if you open it up, it opens up quite wide. There is a nice pocket with two additional pockets inside of it. And there's also this really uh, useful pochette here. This one will detach and it is small, but it is pretty stretchable, I guess, although it does have, it's so funny to me, it has these two little pockets on the inside of this tiny little pochette, I can't imagine why, but anyway, it's a nice little detail. This is in the taupe kind of color, I forgot what they call this color, but it is a color that goes with just about everything, which is why I bought it. The Umprint leather does come in a lot of different options for color. And I looked at oranges and purples and reds and things like that, and I ended up with this because I thought it would go with everything, and it was an excellent choice. But the Enfant leather, if you're familiar with it, is a little bit more supple than your Epi leather. Um, so it is a bit floppier, but it's not going to be so floppy that it's going to lose its shape or sag in any way. And it has a nice sturdy bottom there. Um, it's a bit heavier than some of my other bags, but uh, I have used this quite a bit, and I do enjoy the Enfant leather because it is really durable and doesn't get any scratches or anything on it. Okay, we're winding down. Next, I'm going to do my Neverfull. So again, I have a video on the Neverfull. I said that I didn't like it as a handbag, which I do not, because everything falls out of it. I intended originally when I got this bag to use it as a handbag and I was going to pull in the sides like so and change the shape of it a little bit. I'll show you in a second here. So that it would be more square like that. However, um, 
it kept opening up on the sides anyway, and it didn't really stay that way, and then everything fell out when I was in my car, and I couldn't stand it. So, I put it aside for a while, thought about selling it, and then it hit me, oh my gosh, it's a tote, I'll take it to work. So I've been taking it to work every day, ever since, and I absolutely love it as a tote bag. Mine is a little bit older, it did not come with a pochette, however, it does have the D-ring if I wanted to buy a pochette, but I have so many pochettes, it seems kind of silly. It does have a nice big pocket, and on the pocket is the Louis Vuitton logo. Now, you can tell, sorry if it's a little dusty here, I literally just emptied this out for your viewing pleasure. It has all my work stuff in it, so it's a little bit messy. Uh, but as you can see, the Louis Vuitton here is in sort of like a cursive script, and then the stripes also have the flowers. So this dates it a little bit. It's a little bit of the older style. Some of the, the newer ones have block lettering and the stripes without the flowers. But it's huge and it holds everything and it will never break. Uh, I fill this up to capacity and I don't have any complaints about it. It's not pulling, it's not cracking. The Damier A Ben is phenomenal for durability. Nothing really shows on it and it's one of the most durable things I've ever seen in my life. I love my Neverfull for a tote bag. And the last, ah, I got there. My last handbag today is my Graceful. This is the newest Louis Vuitton that I own. I got it this summer. I wanted a nice summer bag and I wanted it in the Azure because I love the Azure. It is a hobo bag. So it does kind of trick the eye into thinking that it's a tote bag, but because it has the one strap on the top, Everything sort of sags when you hold the strap. The weight of the bag will sag and it will make it into a hobo bag. But it is really versatile and it's so roomy. Uh, some of the best things about this are these nice rings on the side which give it a lot of nice designer detail. Uh, you open it up with a magnet clasp here. It's not a very strong magnet and it does tend to open up a lot. But the fact that it is hanging as a hobo bag and the strap uh, is weighing it or the weight of the bag is pulling on the strap. It doesn't really bother me that much because nothing has ever fallen out of this bag. There's a huge pocket inside. It's about 10 inches, I think. And inside that pocket, I can fit my cell phone and then anything you want to keep secure. And then the most beautiful thing about this bag is this rose ballerine lining, which I love and it makes me happy. It makes me think of spring and I just love my graceful. Right now it is on the shelf because we are having one of the ugliest and worst winters ever. We are in the middle of a snowstorm right now um, and so I can anticipate all kinds of muck and salt and dirt and everything on the road and I don't like to wear a light handbag when the weather's like that because my car gets filthy and then when you brush up against the car you get dirt on your bag. You know the drill if you live in the Northeast at all and you're familiar with snowstorms. So for right now it is on my shelf until the nice weather comes again. <sighs> so that is it. That is my entire handbag collection. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you stayed till the end. Um, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed recently. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, uh, don't to forget to subscribe yourself and uh, comment in the comment section or ask any questions you'd like. I always read all of my comments. So until the next video, take care.